Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, my name's Molly. I'm a mum here in the UK of two children. I have a biological four-year-old daughter and last year I adopted my son. I wanted to do this video on contact with the birth family today because I do get a lot of questions from prospective adopters who are feeling a little bit nervous around this, they're not sure how they feel or they're awaiting training on this or their family finding and kind of weighing up how they feel about the suggested contact and it's a really big part of the adoption process, it's one that is very scary and there's a lot of unknowns for a lot of prospective adopters so I'm going to talk a little bit about the training we received, uh, my views on contact and how generally contact kind of works in the UK adoption process. Again I'm not a professional, I am just the parent who has been through the process so if you want any professional advice definitely go to a local authority or your adoption agency and they will be able to advise you further. Generally in the UK when a child is in foster care if it's the best interest for them and it's safe to do so they will have contact with birth family. It could be birth parent, it could be a birth grandparent, it could be anybody significant in their lives that has had some impact on their birth or upbringing or has been really involved with them. It could be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever the court kind of deems suitable and most likely it would happen at a contact centre. When a child is basically placed for adoption or the decision has been made for a child to be placed for adoption, what normally happens with contact is that a final goodbye visit will be arranged. So a child and the birth family member will meet for one last time before the adoption takes place as a goodbye contact visit. Now this is not always the case, it just depends on the kind of contact that the court and the social worker kind of recommend for the child ongoing after adoption post placement. Sometimes you would have direct contact with birth family, sometimes you would have indirect contact with birth family and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that quickly. When you are looking to adopt a child, you will get their child permanence report. So when you found a little one and their social worker thinks, yes, we're interested in you as their parents, you will receive a child permanence report, which is a report detailing all of that child's life. And in that will be kind of a recommendation about the kind of contact that a social worker and sometimes a court will deem most suitable for that child. So you will always have an idea of the kind of contact that has been proposed before you commit to adopting a child. So when we saw our son's profile, there was a little section that said suggested contact. Um, as his social worker, I suggest that this kind of contact is the most suitable because... Uh, sometimes I believe it can be court ordered um, or the court has some kind of input but I believe in our circumstances a social worker proposed the kind of contact that would be most suitable for our little man. There are two types of contact, there can be direct contact and indirect contact so it's exactly as it sounds, direct contact is that face to face contact, it could be once a year, twice a year, whatever is deemed suitable for the child or it can be indirect and this can be through a system called letterbox which is a system where we as our children's parents write into the letterbox service of our little one's local authority and they then forward that letter on to whoever that child has contact with. It could be any member of birth family, it does not have to be a birth parent, it could be a birth grandparent, it could be a sibling, it could be an auntie, a birth uncle, anybody who is significant in that little one's life, who has maybe been a previous caregiver or anybody who has expressed interest in wanting to continue contact with the child after their place for adoption. The idea of letterbox is that birth family would receive a letter, they would then write back and send that into the letterbox system as well. There's just one address that all these letters go to and there will be someone dedicated to letterbox in each local authority that kind of sorts out who, what goes where, <laughs> what's sent on. They vet all of the letters to make sure everything's suitable and if not it's sent back and you have to redo it. Letterbox tends to be the most popular form of contact but again you could have indirect or direct contact with your child's birth family. The timeline of contact will again be suggested in the child's permanence report. It might be a couple of times a year. Um, I've heard the most usual one is, you know, if you're doing letterbox once a year, you have an agreed time to write and birth family kind of agree a time to write back. Um, but again, that's something that is case dependent and it depends on what's most suitable for the child. As adopters, now we have no legal requirement to commit to contact with birth family and I think as a prospective adopter this is something that really really scared me. I could not fathom how I would feel about having any form of contact with my future child's birth family because I thought it would make me feel threatened, it would constantly remind me that he has 
birth parents and parents that are not me and my views on this changed dramatically and my husband did as well when we had training on birth family and contact and life story work but we have no legal requirement to commit to contact and some people would think phew what a relief but once you have educated yourself on the benefits of contact for your little one and for yourself and for birth family you might have a very different opinion there are a whole host of benefits for contact for a, a child and for birth family and for yourself and I will cover those after I have talked about what is called a one-off meeting. So a one-off meeting is sometimes offered to you when you are adopting your child. Um, again it depends if it's safe, it depends if it's in the best interest of you and birth family and the child. If it is safe to do so and everyone is happy to do so again it's not forced it's completely optional for you and for birth family but highly encouraged is to have a one-off meeting with birth family and this is normally supervised it's normally at a mutual location normally a contact center and I believe it is mediated between social workers or contact center workers um, I believe your adoption social worker normally goes to support you and I do believe that birth family normally have a support worker or a social worker or somebody supporting them and what it is, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's a time for you to meet birth family which sounds terrifying and I was terrified of the thought of this before our training but once we'd done our training I was so, so eager to do this because I knew how much it would benefit our little man to be able to say that time we met your birth dad, your birth mum, your birth grandma, whoever, we could describe what they look like, what they sound like, their personal quirks, we could ask them questions about their hobbies, about their time with our little man or with your future child, you can ask them about their interests, anything that you think is going to be so incredibly amazing for life story work for your child or children when they are older equally birth family can ask you questions it's a great opportunity for them to have peace of mind that their child or children are going to really loving and wonderful parents who will keep their child or children safe it's also really nice to know who you are having contact with so even if you are not offered direct contact and you have letterbox contact with birth family you know who you're writing to for me a really big part of this is that when our children turn 18 they have every legal right to contact their birth family if birth family are happy with that they have you know there's no legal requirement stopping them doing that and me and my husband have always said we will fully support that 100% we are behind our little man if that is the case and with this one-off meeting you will have already met most likely the birth family that they're going to try and contact so you know when it comes to meeting them 18 or however many years down the line you've already had that meeting before so it's not as awkward it's not as uncomfortable and you've already had that memory together another part of the one-off meeting is that you get the opportunity to have a picture with birth family which for life story purposes in your little one's life story book is incredible for them to see you as their parents and their birth family in one picture for their identity, for their, their life jigsaw, for everything would just be the most valuable thing possible for a child. Um, whether or not they want to do life story work or whether or not they want to learn about birth family, even if they don't, you know that it's there for them whenever they need it in the future to see. And that was a huge, huge peace of mind for us because we were committed to doing as much as possible to support our son in knowing who he is and doing life story work so we knew that this was quite an integral part of it if we were offered the one-off meeting. So the benefits of contact, um, oh gosh there's so many benefits of contact for your little one, it will help them feel secure in their identity because they will have that ongoing relationship through you, you are the one that instigates contact, they will have that ongoing communication with their birth family. Um, they may be reassured knowing that their birth family feels safe, particularly if an older child is adopted and they're really concerned or worried about the welfare of their birth family. Having that contact, you know, gives them peace of mind that they are safe, they are well, um, and they don't have to worry about that. It also helps them know where they've come from. Again, it's, it's filling the pieces of the jigsaw and keeping that part of their 
their birth identity alive. We did a lot in training about they will have their birth identity and their adoptive identity and trying to merge them and embrace them together is, is one of the struggles quite a, um, a lot of adoptees can face. Again, that's just from what I've been told. I'm not an adoptee, so I'm not trying to speak on behalf of adoptees. Um, but that was brought up in our training. It will help them make sense of their story, where they've come from, um, what happened before they were in care, again you know who those people are that they are biologically connected to it will also probably help them feel more secure and um resent adoptive parents less and this this was a big one in training you know a lot of children who have a lot of missing gaps in their story or have not much contact um can start to resent adoptive parents because it, it can form part of an identity issue and that's the last thing that we wanted we wanted to embrace his story embrace his birth family our view is that they're very much a part of our, our of our lives because they're part of our son's life and he is you know we love him to pieces so we love all of him i'll just end on a little bit about the feelings that we did have and what changed with contact so going through the adoption process as i previously said we were terrified of contact but after all of the training we had the most transformative change in opinion to contact with birth family and this is something i get asked all the time you know why do they need contact i don't get why they deserve contact you know they've lost their children why do you have to let them know how they are and my response is we do it for our children because we love them we want the best for them and contact is is the best thing for them if it is deemed safe because it will provide them with so much crucial information for them to be secure in who they are and so we embrace and celebrate the fact that our son has a birth family we we are not threatened by them we have no hard feelings um through the adoption process you learn a lot about empathy and the amount of empathy we have for our son's birth family is has just got bigger and bigger over time you know we are grateful for them because without them we wouldn't have him as our son he wouldn't exist and we can't imagine our lives without him so we choose to be grateful and positive there is a general perception that a lot of birth families are horrid people they don't deserve their children you know they deserve to have them the children taken off them and that makes me really really sad because if a lot of people educate themselves on birth families a lot of birth families are just very vulnerable people with very chaotic lives um you you will soon learn that not all birth families fit under that stereotype and it, it does sadden me when we we hear comments about that and i almost feel defensive over my son's birth family particularly because we have contact in place and you know i i have we have a relationship with these people um and you know they're part of my son and so when somebody says something negative or insinuates something negative i get defensive for him because they are his they always will be his and they are a part of who we are who we are and who he is one of the things that i always discuss with my friends is that you don't just adopt a child you adopt their life you adopt their story you adopt their past um, and that includes birth family and for us i am so grateful that we have contact in place because you know i do hope that one day my son can meet his birth family and that they can be a part of his life and our lives in in some way even if that is you know when he's 18 or 50 or whatever he chooses it will be completely led by him you know when your child turns 18 you do effectively lose control over the relationship that they can have with birth family is up to them to choose and my kind of viewpoint is that we just want to be 100 percent supportive we want our son to be secure and happy and feel loved by as many people as possible including birth family and that is that is what we are going to go down the path of thinking you know fully support um, and just be ready for it and embrace it so contact is something we really really pleased um, that is happening for us and i hope that this video has given some insight into how contact works the, the kinds of contact and just i wanted to share my opinion on it because i know that it is a real worry for a lot of people but please go on go on your training ask questions to your social worker um, if your agency or local authority does offer specific birth family contact training please go on it even if you think you're set in your opinion um, you might be surprised at what you learn and how you feel after so i hope that has been helpful i've been wanting to do this video for such a long time but i kind of wanted to wait for a period of time where we'd we'd had kind of some contact and 
we'd had some proper experience of it and we'd gone through all of our training and we kind of really settled on how we feel about it before I made it. So I feel fully confident in how we feel about it. But if anybody does have any questions, uh, please comment below or you can message me on Instagram at Molly Mama Adopt. I'm happy to um, share some of my other thoughts on it or if, you've just, if you're just curious about parts of the training then just please head on over and ask me some questions and please also subscribe to my channel for more adoption related content. I'm going to try and upload weekly if I can. Thank you for watching guys, bye!